Welcome, these beautiful faces on the first day, and I hope you continue your visits to the masajid, to the mosques, to the Islamic circles and Islamic centers during this holy month for what gives flavor to the month of Ramadan is when you come to the masjid. And when you visit, is when you visit your community members, your society members. You visit with them. You break bread with them. You share the dua and the prayers and the supplications with them. That brings lots of meaning and flavor into the fasting of the month of Ramadan. And of course, when you come to the Islamic Center, try to contribute. Let's contribute. Sometimes you contribute with the food, with the money. Sometimes we're cleaning the place, making it neat, you know, beautiful, presentable, clean. These are our responsibilities, all of us. We belong to this place. We have, we have a sense of ownership and sense of belonging to these places. So let's, you know, live up to our responsibilities. The best one who describes the month of Ramadan and the numerous benefits of this month is our great prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This hadith has been narrated by our eighth Imam, Al Imam Ali ibn Musa Rida alayhi salatu wa salam, an abaihi from his forefathers, and Rasulullah. The chain of narrators ends with the prophet. So the prophet said the hadith and his children, his Ahlul Bayt, his family, they passed this hadith from one generation into the other. So Imam al Rida says, the Prophet, during the last Friday of Sha'ban, the year that Ramadan was prescribed and mandated, it was the second year of the Hijrah. When the Muslims were in Mecca, they, did, they were not asked to fast. There were no fasting. So when they came to Medina, on their second year of staying in Medina, Quran came in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Now, fasting has been prescribed over you as it has been with previous religions and generations. So you may attain self-restraint and self-control. So the Prophet stood and he said to his community, Ayyuhal nas, innahu qad aqbala ilaykum shahrullah this month has arrived carrying three gifts. Gift number one is barakah. What is barakah? What is the meaning of barakah? We always say, God bless you. What does it mean, bless? What is the true meaning of a blessing? We say we have so much blessings from God. What do you mean by that? Blessing. And Islam means continuity, sustainability, and stability. It means what God would give you and bestows upon you remains there. It's not taken away from you. I'll give you an example. You may say, God bless your children. What does it mean? God bless your children. It means that your children are going to be the source of giving, the source of honor the source of pride for you. They are not going to be a burden on you. Many children, God give families, some of them, he gives them many boys, many girls, but they are source, a source of burden on the family. The family is not proud of their children. And sometimes God gives only one son, only one daughter to one family. One, not five, not ten. But that one is a plenty. Plenty in goodness. Plenty in giving, in contribution to the family. So this is the meaning of a blessing. Your son is a blessed. It means your son or your daughter is the source of continuity, sustainability, stability. God bless your house. What does that mean? It means your house becomes 
a source or a center of goodness. Some homes are not a source of goodness. There is always fighting, always conflict, always divorce, always courts, always they calling 911. The cops, they know the house. Even if they close their eyes, they know how to get to it because they've been to it many, many times. This is not a source of blessing. This is not a house that has barakah. This is a house without barakah. A house with barakah is the house that has a stability, beauty. Second, the Quran says second. Second is shelter. You enjoy it. You enjoy the house. There is no headache. There is no conflict. There is harmony. There is respect. The father respects the mother. The mother respects the father. The children respect their parents. The parents respect their, you know, children. And the respect is a mutual. And members of the family, they help each other. They stand with each other. They are not against each other. In some homes, there is always screams and yellings and bad words and anger. This is not a home. You have to keep the peace. And that is the job of the father, number one. The father has to be a role model, an example of bringing peace into the family. The father should not scream, should not disrespect. And then the mother, if we are a good example, our children would look at us and most likely they would follow our example. So this is the meaning of, or if we say a country that has blessings, Allah says about Mecca, inna awwala baytin wali'al nas lalladhi bi bakkata mubarakan, mubarakan. Mecca is a place of blessings. What does that mean? It means when you go there, you receive forgiveness from God. When you go there, you get peace of mind in Mecca. Place of, and the same thing with Jerusalem. Allah says, Subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa. Alladhi barakna hawlah. The farthest mosque, which is Jerusalem, in Jerusalem, where we made its territory a blessing. Barakna hawlah. Because it's source of, it should be, now it's not a source of peace. It's a source of conflict and bloodshed, now, right now. But that is not what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be a place where Jews, Christians, Muslims, and others, they all have to have sense of belonging to that place. It belongs to Abraham. Abraham is the founder, before him Solomon. Those are the founders. So it has to be the place of peace. Tranquility. So the Prophet says, إِنَّهُ قَدْ أَقْبَلَ إِلَيْكُمْ شَهْرُ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِالْبَرَكَةِ This month carries blessings in this month. The days of this month has blessings. The months of this, the, the nights of this month, because you get something out of them. What do you get? What do you get? Look at what the Prophet says. وَالرَّحْمَةِ You get the mercy of God. You get the maghfirah, the forgiveness of God. If God does not provide us with Ramadan, and if he does not tell me and tell you that I am going to forgive you in Ramadan, I am going to forgive your sins, we would reach the state of despair, despair, and we will be definitely frustrated because we know God is not forgiving me. Why should I be good anymore? Why should I be good? I'm not going to be good anymore. Because God is angry at me. And he doesn't want to forgive me. But God says, no. I'm forgiving you. I'm opening my doors for you during this month. These 30 nights, the Prophet says, all Satans are handcuffed. Handcuffed. All Satans. They are handcuffed. They cannot reach to you. They cannot hurt you. They cannot deceive you. So take advantage. All the, those bad things, the bad ones, are handcuffed. So you are safe in this month. So take this opportunity to go to God. Shahrun huwa inda Allahi afdal al-shuhur. Ayyamu huwa afdal al-ayyam. Layalihi afdal al-layali. Sa'at huwa afdal al-sa'at. Shahrun du'eetum fih ila ziyafatillah. Wa ju'iltum fih min ahli karamatillah. God... The food that you ate today here, the iftar, who's the owner and who's the host? Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God. 
Yes, God has some agents who put the food, who bring you the food, the drink. Those are agents. But the provider, the real host, is God. And you are the VIPs. All of you, all of you, without distinction, are VIPs of God during this month. And fasukum fihi tasbih. When you breathe, when you breathe, you are sanctifying God. It's going to be considered sanctification when you breathe. And fasukum fihi tasbih. Naumukum fihi ibadah. When you go sleep, then this is an act of worship. Your sleep is considered an act of service and worship because you are energizing yourself, preparing yourself for another round of service. Every act that you present is accepted by God. Your prayers are accepted. Then the Prophet says, in this month, make a special effort to reach out to the poor and the destitutes, those who cannot afford food. Try to find them. That is the best act in this month. The best act that pleases God is to reach out to people in your neighborhood, in your city, in your county, and say, this is a meal. This is some food. Even if they don't know you, they don't know your name, and you don't know their names, and you shouldn't even know their names, you shouldn't even know their religion and their identity, because they are humans. They are humans. Reach out to them. Try to help them. I said yesterday in the Friday prayers, Ramadan should not be only exclusively for us. Ramadan should be for all Americans. How is that? We fast. We're not going to ask Americans to fast, though many of them are fasting, you know. Many non-Muslims, they do share the fasting. I know many of them, men and women, every year. Some of them fast 30 days of this month. And they are Christians. They are non-Muslims. But how do you share the blessings of this month? By introducing Islam to them. Invite them for a meal, for iftar, to break the fast, your fast, share it with them. If, if it is difficult for you, you don't have enough room in your house, enough facility, make some food, some pastry, some sweets, whatever, and take it to them. <laughs> Tell them this is the month of Ramadan. They're going to ask you about the occasion. Tell them now it's the month of Ramadan. This is a holy month, a month that we go back to God and reach out to our neighbors. This is how we share the blessing. Invite them into your institutions, into your mosques. Let them come. Let them sit on the floor and eat with you, break your bread, and tell them who you are. Tell them, this is me. This is my religion. This is my tradition. So try to reach out to them. In this month, respect the elderly. I know many young generation, they do not respect their parents. They don't respect them. I'm not saying respect them, just salute them every morning like military officer. No, they don't expect that from you. Respect, it means when they say something to you, they say this is harmful. Don't get close to this. Don't do this. Don't eat this. Don't go there. Listen to them. Because they have more, more what? Experience in this life and more knowledge. Besides, they love you. I cannot imagine a father or a mother who hates her son. I can't imagine. Believe me, there is no father or a mother who hates his children. They don't hate you. So listen to them. Listen to them and respect them. Respect the elderly. If you want your children tomorrow to come and respect you, you must respect your parents today. You must respect them. I said so many times to many people who come here to convert to Islam and they tell me what should we do with our parents, I tell them from now on that you are converting to Islam, embracing this new religion, you have to respect your parents even more, more, 
because now you are a Muslim. You have a big responsibility. You are a different human being. And God says in the book, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِلْ وَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Worship me and be nice to your parents. وَرْحَمُوا صِغَارَكُمْ Respect your elderly and bestow mercy on the young ones. Bestow mercy on them. Do not neglect them. A father should not neglect his children. If you are neglecting them outside Ramadan, don't do this during the month of Ramadan. Pay more attention, spend more time. Your children, they need you. They need to speak to you. They need to see the father. They need to see him visible there. Also, they need the mother. They need to see more love, more care from the mother. So bestow more mercy on the young ones. وَصِلُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ صِلُوا أَرْحَامَكُمْ means connect with your extended family. Many people who live in this country and elsewhere, they don't get a chance to call their aunts, their uncles, their cousins, their you know, relatives. They don't. They work like a machine. Many people in this country, they are machines, by the way. Believe me, they are machines. Machines in the shape of a human being. Machines. So they don't get a chance they don't even remember that they have an extended family. They don't reach out to them. During this month, reach out to your extended family. How many cousins you have? Give them a call. Give them a call. Nowadays, if the call was expensive in the past or it takes time, nowadays with WhatsApp, you can leave a 30-second message. Hey, how are you? I love you. You know, I miss you. That's it. At least say hey to them so they know you are still alive. And they realize that this is the month of mercy. This is the month of connection. Connection with each other. Try to reach out to them. From today, from tomorrow. Reach out to your extended family members. السنتكم, the Prophet says, in this month, safeguard your tongues. The most uncontrollable organ that we have in our body is the tongue. We have less control over the tongue. As soon as we get angry, as soon as we get angry, immediately we say something bad. And this is unacceptable. This would hurt your character. This would compromise your integrity. You would lose your value. People judge you by what you say. By what you say. Because what you say is the reflection of you, your heart, your character, your spirit. If your spirit is good, what you say is going to be good. If the spirit is evil, what we say is also evil. So let's try to control the tongue. Let's consider what we say. Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he says, فَمُلْ عَاقِلِ فَمُلْ عَاقِلِ قَلْبُ الْعَاقِلِ أَمَامَ أَمَامَ فَمِهِ Insan who is wise, who is wise, he puts his heart first, then tongue second. But the foolish, the ahmaq, he puts his tongue first, and then the heart second. Meaning that when he speaks, when he throws the bad things, then he starts thinking, oh, why did I say this? This was too bad. But a person who is wise, he doesn't say unless he evaluates. What I'm going to say, is it good or bad? If it is good, he will send it out. If it is bad, he would not send it. He would restrain it. He would restrain it. وَحْفَظُوا أَلْسِنَتَكُمْ Safeguard your tongue is in this one. When you speak to your family members, when you speak to everyone, believe me, sometimes you can win the hearts of people through your tongue, through something small you say, something very small, small sentence, small word you say. You can win the hearts and the minds of many people around you. And this is exactly the teachings of this book, our book. Now we have a president who does not control his tongue. And look at what he's doing now to America. He's hurting his country. He's hurting 330 million people. Because he cannot control his tongue. 
It damages, not only sometimes. Sometimes someone says something damages himself. And sometimes it damages his county, and sometimes it damages the whole country. Rather, the whole world. Ihfadu al And then, وَغُضُّ عَمَّا لَا يَحِلُّ النَّظَرْ إِلَيْهِ أَبْصَارَكُمْ Control your eyes too, during this month. وَعَمَّا لَا يَحِلُّ الْإِسْتِمَاعُ إِلَيْهِ أَسْمَاعَكُمْ Things, certain things, you should not listen to them, don't listen to them. Control yourself. Say, in the month of Ramadan, I'm not going to contaminate my heart through listening to something bad. Don't listen. وَتَحَنَّنُوا And I will conclude with this small sentence. وَتَحَنَّنُوا عَلَىٰ أَيْتَامِ النَّاسِ يُتَحَنَّنْ عَلَىٰ أَيْتَامِكُمْ In the month of Ramadan, be extra compassionate with the orphans. There are orphans in your community. In this country and other countries. Sometimes you see the orphans, sometimes you see their pictures. In Syria alone, there are hundreds of thousands of orphans today. In one country. In Iraq alone, there are millions of orphans. Reach out to them. I know they could not be your relative, but they are humans. They are related to you in a humanity. And you have to be responsible in this life. God did not send me to this life for just for me to eat and drink and have fun. This is the life of animals. God says, I will judge you on the day of judgment by the number of the lives you saved. I don't care how much you prayed, how much you fast. This was done for you. I care about how much lives you saved. How many lives? How many lives? On that day, God is going to judge us and reward us based on how many lives you dignified, you saved. You brought them back to dignity. And one example of that are the orphans. Reach out to them. Try to contribute. Try to give. Try to feed. If you can do it yourself, this is wonderful. If not, ask someone that you trust. Tell them these are 50 bucks. Give it to someone. Buy some food for this family, for that family, for this orphan. وَتَحَنَّنُوا The Prophet says, be extra compassionate and careful with the orphans during this month. May Allah, inshallah, bestow blessings on all of you and your families and your children and accept your fasting during this month. Remember to recite Quran. Quran is a book that opens our hearts and our minds in this month. This month, witness the birth of this book. Not only this book. In Islam, we believe even Torah, Old Testament, even the Bible arrived on Moses and Jesus during the month of Ramadan, a holy month for all religions. So try to read at least one section, one juz. This book has 30 sections, one section, inshallah, and we see you every night here. We break, uh, break bread together, invite your friends and your neighbors. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma khfir lil-mu'mineen wal mu'minat wal muslimin wal muslimat الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات من على مرضانا بالشفاء والصحة والعافية وعجل في فرج سيدنا ومولانا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات والشهداء ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد